Hi everyone, Quivine here from CIT's Blackrock Castle Observatory. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the night sky for this weekend, the 18th, 19th, 20th, and a little bit of Monday the 21st, thanks to an upcoming close conjunction. A conjunction is whenever two objects in the sky are very close together, and a close conjunction, well, it's just emphasis on the close. Whenever a planet passes right in front of another planet, that's usually what we would call a close conjunction. When they're so close together, they almost look like one object. And that's going to start happening from this Friday, from the 18th. Uh, we're just here now at about quarter past five. We have Mars, the Moon, and Jupiter and Saturn together. Both planets are right there appearing as one dot. So we will take a closer look at those. We are also going to take another look at the northern sky. In a recent video, we talked about the different mythologies and cultures that look at the northern sky. If you missed that video, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the blue bell icon to make sure you get notified of our videos. That'll make sure you don't miss a thing. We're going to start by leaving the sky get a little bit darker just to make sure that we're getting the best viewing conditions possible to see both Jupiter and Saturn. Even with a small pair of binoculars, and if you have good eyesight, maybe even with your eyes, on the 18th, Jupiter and Saturn will quickly resolve into two separate dots. But Saturn is going to be passing right behind Jupiter particularly on the 21st. So we can see here, even taking a closer look, it appears to be one oblong blur in the sky. It's tough to see that it is actually two separate planets until you start taking a very close look, close enough to start seeing Jupiter's moons. Now we've taken a look at Jupiter and Saturn and indeed many planets in close up in previous videos, but one part of the software Stellarium, which I haven't shown off yet, is its ability to really simulate the view through a telescope. Not just give you a closer view, but really show what different things look like at specific magnifications. And it's by using the oculars up here. So what we have up here are different ways of look, different aspects that affect your view through a telescope. Telescope. So the lens of the telescope, that's usually the eyepiece side lens, the little bit right in front of your eye. The telescope itself, of course, there are many different types of telescope with many different ratings. I'm going to start with a reasonably small telescope that I'm familiar with, the Mead EXT80. We have many Mead EXT70s, 80s, 90s, and even a Mead LX200 at Blackrock Castle Observatory. So these are telescopes that I'm reasonably familiar with. Oculars usually go at the front of a telescope. Sometimes they limit your view or magnify it or affect it in a different way. And they can affect your field of view, how wide your view of the sky is, which is particularly useful and good to know about when you're looking at two objects that are very close together. The wider your field of view, the more of the area you will see, the narrower your field of view, the smaller an area you are looking at. So with a telescope, that's just 80 millimeters wide at the top and with no extra magnification at all, Jupiter and Saturn still appear to be one blur in the sky. But if we start using these extra magnifying lenses, we can see that we are starting to see the moons. If we go a little bit more, <clears throat> we'll start to see a gap between Jupiter and Saturn. This is about as good as a small telescope like this can do until we start changing the oculars, which can also affect how much you see. So if we start changing these oculars with different fields of view, different widths, then we'll start to see different degrees of detail. So we can see here we're getting a much better view, not just of Jupiter's moons, but of Saturn's moons as well. If I take away the names, that should be even more clear. Different things will give you a different degree of view, but if your telescope itself is small, there's only so much you can do. If we go up to a bigger size of telescope, then the magnification will get better. So this is an ETX90, again, a reasonably common telescope. And if we start using better and better oculars here, well, now we're seeing stripes on Jupiter. But this ocular only gives us a field of view of 50. So although we're getting a great view of Jupiter, Saturn is way off at the side. We can't see it at all. We need a wider field of view to see Saturn, but often that means less magnification. So we're not seeing as much detail on either planet. If we go up to a very large telescope, <clears throat> like an LX200, then we might start to see some details. So if we go through these different 
oculars, we'll hopefully get a view where we can see some details on both planets at the same time. Uh, we may need to change telescope and these are just some binoculars. So you can see even a good pair of binoculars can show you Jupiter's moons, which is a very useful thing to test out. If you're planning on buying a telescope or a binocular, software like this can help you see the difference that that makes, the actual view that you get through those different devices. So here with a Mead LX200 12 inch aperture, using a 31 millimeter ocular and a three times Barlow lens, we're just about seeing stripes on Jupiter and the rings of Saturn. So this is really the perfect view to get through a close conjunction where you can see both planets, moons, and that distinct feature of both planets, the stripes of Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, this is one of the most impressive views to get. And if you can catch a view like this through your telescope, well, you're very lucky indeed. And it's partly thanks to the conjunction that they're having. <clears throat> Conjunctions happen all of the time between different planets as they move around the sun, but we've got one coming at a particularly good time of year. So if you suspect that somebody is getting you a telescope or a binoculars for Christmas, it might be worth asking them to let you open a little bit early for the 21st so that you can take a closer look at Jupiter and Saturn. Or if you're planning to buy a telescope and haven't decided yet, software like Stellarium with its handy ocular feature can let you test out different types of telescope, different types of lenses, so you can get a better idea of what to expect to see. Turning around to the northern sky, we've got our fantastic constellations and shapes, the Plough, the Big Dipper, the Cassiopeia, the North Star, and in previous shows we talked how different cultures have different shapes. The ancient Greeks saw a bear here, the Inuits would have seen a moose, an elk, or a caribou, and these different creatures still serve the same function of pointing towards the North Star. We are at a time of year where we have lovely, clear, frosty evenings with no clouds, which are the best nights to see the stars. But it is good to be prepared for cloudy weather as well. And of course, going outside with a little bit of protection, a hood, an umbrella to protect you from the rain is always useful. But if it's cloudy and you've got an umbrella over your head, well, <clears throat> the only way to see these stars is if you have them printed on the inside of your umbrella. And thanks to the European Space Agency, you can get an umbrella which not only has the stars of the sky, but the shapes and names of the constellations printed on the inside. Now, luckily, you don't have to go all the way to the European Space Agency. You don't have to go to Darmstadt in Germany or any of the other major headquarters. You can go to Black Rock Castle Observatory in Cork City and pick up a umbrella or various other pieces of European Space Agency merchandise, which has these images on the inside. Of course, you don't have to come all the way down just to look around and decide which kit or bag or shirt or umbrella you would prefer. Our stock is online. The BCO gift shop now has an online component and you can take a look at various things there. You can even click and collect and decide what you're going to purchase before you come and visit us. So if you are uh, planning on getting outside over the winter months and want to be prepared for the rain, but don't want to sacrifice your view of these lovely shapes and stars, the European Space Agency umbrella at the Black Rock Castle Observatory gift shop is one option. And of course, we have plenty of other things there, such as kits and games to keep you occupied over the winter period. So I hope you all get a chance to go outside on the longest night of the year on the 21st which will also give you a chance to see this lovely close conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn.